conspiracy that took place a long, long time ago to keep the black woman less intelligent than anybody else. My conspiracy theory goes like this. You have a, there's a test. The test has 10 questions on it. There's a male and female of every race in the room, Asian, Pacific Islander, black, white, Mexican in the room. Everybody gets the test. Everybody in the room misses five questions. You miss five questions on a 10 question test. Everyone gets a 50, but the black girl, the black girl gets a 70. Same test, 10 questions, same people. Everybody take the test. Everybody miss one question. Everybody gets a 90, but the black girl, the black girl gets 105. The black girl then takes the test to a house, posts the shit on a refrigerator. Everybody in the house walks past it, sees that she missed one question, and don't say shit about it. I believe that they did that purposely. I believe they purposely made our women less intelligent than us, but then make it easier for her to be the breadwinner of the household. So you have a Donald Trump situation, a stupid motherfucker with money. And we're Americans, so money means intelligence to us. The more money you have, the smarter you are. We don't, we don't, we don't, you know, plan for, you know, uh, folks winning a lottery and shit like that. But you can have a country redneck motherfucker who wins the fucking lottery and they will talk to you, to you as if they're the smartest motherfucker on the planet. And they can back it up and substantiate because of the money that they have. Do you know how hard it is to tell a bitch that she's wrong about the color of the sky when you have to live in her house and drive her car every day? As a street nigga, you get in these situations where, you know what I'm saying, you're going to have to stay with a hoe. You can't get none of your name. You're going to have to drive this whole car as you're trying to come up. This is normal shit. This is normal. The second that you fall off or start trying to work at a fast food place and shit like that, the whole start treating you different. You've been new that, that this whole one is the smartest motherfucker on the planet, but you weren't looking for that. And you never took into account that this hoe has the mind of a 16 year old. My nigga, there's been times when I've been around hoes, you know, just, you know, Whatever stand with a hoe, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just trying to do my thing, whatever the fuck it is I'm doing. And I put on Medea or whatever fucking black show, uh, The Wood, uh, Boys in the Hood, whatever fuck, Love and Hip Hop, the same way I would put in Dora the Explorer and SpongeBob for a child. Love and Hip Hop and all these ratchet uh, uh, Miami Inc. and all these fucking retarded ass shows are like Dora the Explorer and fucking SpongeBob to these bitches. I'm t like, dog, I'll put that shit on and she'll treat that shit just like a child would treat motherfucking SpongeBob on the TV. All her attention be right there and she'll stop talking to me, which is what I want because I don't want to talk to you about fucking the color of fingernails or what the fuck kind of fucking weave or what the fuck you want to eat next or what I don't want to talk about that shit stop talking to me you have the mind of a fucking adolescent and my issue with that was I can't really find after you show me where you're I can't really find you sexually attractive because finding someone with the mind of a child sexually attractive is extremely and dangerously close to fucking pedophilia we would because the average 16-year-old black girl is built like a 25-year-old. If all you need from a bitch is her ID, you, a bitch can get a fake ID easy. If what lets you know a bitch's age is her ID or her telling you, and you can't, if you can't use your own discernment and say, this whole speak like a fucking child. I don't think this hoe is no 25 years old. Nah, bitch, you talk like a 16-year-old. Nothing else should matter. Nothing else should matter because motherfucker can lie about their age. They can have a fake ID. The average 16-year-old is built like a 25-year-old. The average 25-year-old has the mind of the average 16-year-old. 
You understand what I'm saying? So if you get put in a situation to where your bitch has a, or the bitch that you with has a, um, a child that is a, a budding teenager, you know, the mama ain't going to shut the fuck up. The mama ain't going to be too much different than the goddamn daughter. So the daughter, if, if the mama is a nothing ass bitch, the, the daughter going to walk around the house while the mama at work in fucking boy shorts and a fucking bra. Because her mind is like, I want to see if I can, you know what I'm saying, pull my mama old man. That's what her mind is at. And then we get into this whole rape culture. So what I'm saying is, before anything take place with a bitch, yo, the, I understand that it's a, it's a, it, it's, it's a hard fight to fight to, to be like, to have that type of self control where you can say, I know that your mind is not what my mind is. I'm just going to back away from this situation slowly. You got ass, you got titties, you ain't got no stomach, you got a pretty face. But you just said something about the city girls and you weren't talking in a bad manner. You just said something about fingernails and you weren't talking about biology or fucking science. I, if that's where your mind is at, if, if your conversation deals with Loving hip hop or fucking reality TV shows, we don't need to have no motherfucking words. You not my type, and we have to start doing that shit. Stop, stop fucking with hoes just to fuck a bitch. It's not gonna lead to nothing because soon as you bust, ah, 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 shit, ah. Uh. Now this whole wanna come touching this shit like that. You like, fuck, get the fuck off me, yo. What's wrong with you? Like, nah, nothing. I'm just saying, like, let's just hold back right fast. Because you don't really fuck with this hoe. And it's like, how many times and, and then but when you're in a fucked up situation, it's like you a slave because you can't even show that shit. Whatever that hoe do after you bust, you just have to go with it. That hoe can keep sucking on some shit like that. You're like, yo, all right, yo, that's good. All right, you didn't show me you a freak. All right, whoa, let's just, but she keep on going and shit like that. Like, because a hoe ain't never been told the truth. You know what I'm saying? Because every nigga she fuck with has been so amazed by her image that they won't even tell her that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I don't, I really don't like the way you give head. Like, yeah, you fine as fuck, but like, I really don't like the way you give head. A nigga not gonna say that. He, oh, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, I love you. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Fuck. Oh, shit. Fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> so my, and it just, just that shit, man. And it just, you gotta stop that shit, dog. Like right now, as, and I'm speaking to my niggas. If you trying to get into the Men Too movement, um, we going to speak behind the scenes, man, because I ain't trying to get nothing taken down because I, I have a couple ideas, but I'm also open to some ideas. What I want to get changed, honestly and seriously, what I want to get changed is what has to be proven in a rape trial. In a rape trial, as we're going through this right now, um, if you look up a defense for a false rape allegation, dog, you'll, it'll depress the fuck out of you. And we should really do this more often. We should look into things that we can possibly potentially get into. You know that right now you can potentially get a fucking rape case. You don't have to rape a bitch to get a rape case. All you have to do is make a whole mad and you'll get a rape case. You understand? You look at a defense for a false rape allegation and that shit will depress you. Because there's really no way to fucking defend the shit. There's no way to defend it. You just out here. Just fuck it. I'm just out this bitch. I, I just hope they believe me over her. It's all about character. She said that she said stop and you didn't stop. Rape first. Because she was scared. I'm not finna. That shit right there made me so fucking mad. So hit me up in the comments. I mean on, on in the in the inbox. If you serious about this men too shit. The first thing I think we should do is start a petition. Um to get these laws changed to where the burden of proving something is on the fucking prosecutor. 
She's the one claiming that I fucking raped her. Why in the fuck do I got to prove that I'm innocent? Why shouldn't she have to prove that I did it? And if a rape kit does not prove a rape, why in the fuck is it called a rape kit? If a rape kit only proves that motherfuckers had sex, why is it not called a fucking sex kit? The fuck, man? So get in the, get in the fucking, uh, whatchamacallit, man, and let's goddamn see what's going on. Because this shit, it went on long enough. And I'm telling you, niggas, until we get this shit straightened out, no fucking sex, dog. Ain't no me, no new bitch from this point forward. Me, new hoes is too dangerous out here. You don't know what the fuck going on. At any moment, dog, any bitch can be your last hoe. As you see with this nigga, Dominique Williams. You're not going to see this shit coming. It's serious. Yeah, I don't know nothing about that. Um, I feel you, my nigga. I, I know you need pussy, my nigga. But this is what I'm telling you, dog. Look at my nigga. Look at the nigga who was talking earlier. He's still in this bitch. But I, I feel you, though, my nigga. We just had a misunderstanding. Um, Yeah, just come to my comment section. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. But I'm tired of saying that it's not fair shit. I'm not with that. It's not fair shit. That shit, like, it's not like whole shit. That's not fair. Something has to happen. And I'm telling you, until we get this shit, as my man just said, he need pussy. But, dog, I'm telling you, this, this is what I said. The only only way that you can beat this rule is if you do this shit right here. If you going to fuck a hoe, you tell that hoe beforehand, I, I record all of my sexual encounters. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hope that's cool with you. Like, you know... I be having hoes in the, you know, in the DM, whatever like that on there. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's rock out shit. I, I guess they just be testing my celibacy shit or whatever like that. But I'm telling you, I tell a hoe, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, look, we, we can fuck whatever like that, but I record all my sexual endeavors. I record all my sexual endeavors because I can get hair from a hoe and, and, and plus the fact the three S's are for getting to success. Um, I feel like when you're trying to get to what you're going to do for the rest of your life, you shouldn't have any fucking interferences. So that means sobriety, solitude, and celibacy. When you are sober, you got a clear mind. And I truly believe that the black man's mind will by itself, as a default, always think its way out of any situation. But when you put your mind to sleep, when you're under the influence you put your mind to sleep, it can't think its way out of shit. It can just stay in there. You just hear. And every time your, your mind try to wake up and try to stretch a little bit, you get uncomfortable. You get uncomfortable, so you got to put that bitch back to sleep. That shit start wearing off. The, your mind try to, all right, come on, man, we got to get it. It's letting you feel that pain because you should feel pain. You in a fucked up situation. You should be in pain. You're not in pain because you're not high. You're in pain because you fucked up right now. Your situation that you're in right now is embarrassing as fuck. You should be in pain. If you get shot in the leg, you should feel that pain so you know, I right, let me goddamn administer some, you know what I'm saying, aid right here. You can't keep ignoring how fucked up your situation is. Motherfuckers on coke, they, don't, they can't feel that shit so they don't get medical aid and bleed the fuck out. You try to be numb to the pain, but that pain is a blessing because that pain is going to make you get up and do something about your fucked up situation. But as long as you continue to put your mind to sleep, ain't shit going to change. Your mind has to be sober. It has to be a sober, untouched, natural black man mind. And it will get you out of any fucking, trust me, my nigga. Trust, I was walking last year up and down this road. I was doing the podcast thinking I was doing everything I'm doing now, but I was walking, dog. My mind naturally do this, do that. Because our, our minds, the black man mind is like a fucking sponge. We have a very high capacity for learning. 95% of the niggas who sell dope could have been anything they wanted to be. Lawyer, because as long as you have a capacity for learning, you just have to learn the law. You just have to learn what how to do brain surgery. You have a capacity to learn the shit. 
If you can remember this nigga attitude, I, that nigga owe me money, that nigga is trying to rob something, I know what them niggas doing. You know how much shit you got to have in your head to sell dope? So that's the, the sobriety part. The solitude part, as I told y'all, life is a doctor in itself. It's like the doctor's office. When you're dealing with life and, and life, the doctor, life, is trying to tell you what's wrong with you, you don't need all these people around you. You need to deal with life one-on-one. -on -one. So it can point out every little thing and you can hear what life is trying to tell you. You can't have all these fucking people around having, having their issues on your mind and, 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 and all this shit like this. Like if I was still trying to come up right now, I couldn't really deal with my brother's issues because I, I would have my, I, I would have my own issues. And that's what happened when you have people around you. Their issues become yours. Let's go to celibacy. Celibacy is so important because you can't, as I, as y'all saw earlier, a, a, a girl wanted to know what my life was, but because of my relationship with her, I wouldn't want her to see this right here. And that's what I'm telling you. When you have responsibilities or, or, um, obligations to a girl, you can't do everything that you're going to need to do. If I would have had to been pleased at time when I was building this fucking platform, I couldn't have did the shit. You got the hoe in the room. She got them. When you come into bed, like I'm not coming to bed tonight. Like at some nights I stay up all night long working, getting ready for the next day. But when, so you trying to do this shit and please her. Let me tell you something, dog. When it comes to success, it, it breaks down like this. You're either going to have a successful relationship or a successful career. You cannot have both because they both need the same things. Nurturing, attention, care, patience. They need the same things. You're not two people. You're one person. So you have to choose. And oftentimes, we don't have the heart just to break it off with a bitch. So now we get into the level of where we plan with the whole whatever like that. And now this hoe is feeling more and more played every day to the point where she go to the police station and say, you fucking raped her. We know what these hoes do. I keep, I keep hollering at y'all about this shit, about how, um, you know that when your bitch get mad, she'll do anything to fuck you over. Not even thinking about the consequences. Cut you, throw water on you. But just as soon as you start bleeding, I didn't mean to do that. Huh? I didn't know having a child was going to be this hard. Huh? And they can do that. We can't. We're accountable for every mistake we make. But that's another thing. But celibacy is so important because even when you fucking hoes, just fucking them. As you see, it's so fucking dangerous. Um, a lot of times, sex is the way that hoes come into your life. A lot of times, a bitch will be just fine with being a side bitch. And she'll do that shit for two months, and then you'll start noticing she start getting mad when you don't call. You know what I'm saying? She start getting mad when you don't answer, when you don't text back fast enough. Nobody's going to sit in that position for a long period of time without some motherfucking bullshit. So I say just stay to yourself until you're at that point where you can tell a hoe, hey, look, I don't, I don't have sex unless it's on camera. And if the hoe say no, bitch, I didn't want to fuck. Bitch, you came at me with this sex shit. I was good where I was at. So to my man who said I need pussy, you don't need pussy. You need to be successful. You need to have money. You need to be that nigga. I, I do believe us as black men are kings. I believe that we are way more in depth to do way more than anybody else on the planet. And that's why they put so much other shit on our head. There's so many obstacles out there for the black man. So you're going to have to be way more disciplined than everybody else. And that's why I say get the fuck away from folks because they'll have you like, shit, he did it, I can do it. Just by default, just by uh, this subliminally, you will feel like, subconsciously, you'll feel like, he did it, it's all good, so I can do it. But that's not what your destiny reads. Your destiny reads a whole bunch of other shit. You got so much more you got to do with your life. His life is going to be right here in this town forever. What you're going to do is going to take you all over the world. All it deals with is if, whether or not you going to, you know what I'm saying, actually allow that to happen. Or you're going to Fall into the trap.
And that's all that is, man. And that, that's more than anything. That's that's what the fuck I'm saying. I would like for my niggas, man, to fuck with this sobriety shit, man. Fuck with this solitude shit. And fuck with this celibacy shit and see how focused you get. When your whole life you are goes into what you want to be. Nothing else. Just what you want to be. What you want to be in life. That's all it is to it. When you put everything that you are, nobody else, not no brother, not no auntie, not no nothing, no children, all you, it's you locked in, it's all you. Because it's like this, until you become what you pose to become, you can't help no fucking body. You can, you can claim the fuck, yeah, man, I'm working at nine, I'm working this bullshit at minimum wage job, and I'm taking care of my kids and shit like that. You ain't gonna go nowhere like that. You better off saying, hey, look here. Daddy gonna go, daddy gonna be gone for a little while, but when I come back, we gonna be living like we supposed to. Instead of crumb to crumb and shit like that. That ain't shit. It's gonna take sacrifice and pain, dog. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be a happy time. It's going to be hard and it's going to be embarrassing. Hey, hold on. Let me get these fucking... Watch this. I'm going to get the dog. Come here, Saki. I mean, Aki. Come here. Don't show these people who you is. Come here. This is Aki. I think Saki ran off the leash and shit. You wet? What the fuck you doing wet? Look at the camera, Aki. Look. Look at the people. Shout out to my nigga Beast Chains. My nigga was from Jamaica and shit like that. Look at him. Look at the people. Say hey to him. Say hey to the put down your face. Yeah, these my dogs, man. He um these actually rescue a lot of folks asked about the dogs. One day I was trying to, you know, come up with more ideas to, to build the podcast. I think it was actually I think March of last year. And um I just heard I was just on the bed trying to think. And I heard some yelping outside. I go out there and it's just them two and their mom was real emaciated. They were just the smallest of puppies and their mom was just real emaciated. So I fed the mom. Uh-uh. So I fed the mom. Uh-uh. I fed the mom and then I fed them and shit like that. And the mom just walked up. She just walked the fuck off. I called my mom and my mom said that the mom would probably come back tomorrow, but the mom never came back. So I just had them since then. And I had two of them. Um, one time they got caught by the pound. I went up there to the pound to go get them. And I saw that the mama was there. She looked like she had gained the weight back and she had three more puppies. I tried to get all the motherfuckers, but they wouldn't let me and shit. Um, I just recently went and got their long lost brother, Luke, from, uh, the Fairhope pound and shit like that. But he, they, they neutered him and they cut his nuts off. So he's real skittish and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Say hey to the people, man. So that that's how it happened. But these they they're really like staples. Like they they were here before everything. And like I was going through the three S's. I was all alone with no you know nothing. So these were my you know what I'm saying my friends because I didn't have no friends. You know what I'm saying it was nobody was you know nobody was there. It was just me. I'm dead fucking honest. Nobody was there. And that's why I'm telling y'all, dog. like, as you trying to build some shit, whatever like that, nobody's going to be there, man. Oh, I didn't miss all this shit. Damn. Nobody's going to be there. 
as you're building, it's going to be rough as fuck. It's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. It's going to be fucked up. And it's not going to be no happy time. But once you get to the other side, what the fuck? What's going on? It's a 22 remaining. What is talking? What's going on?